Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarczuk. Hell of a title, right? In fact, um, this is the only reason, well, the first reason why I picked this book up. I know we can all admit to uh, judging books by their covers, but I don't believe I've ever judged a book by its title in such a way where it compelled me to pick it up. Now, of course, I did read the description, and if it had been something that I wasn't completely interested in, of course, I would not have picked it up. Another thing, really, took me over the edge, and that is it is the winner of the Nobel Prize for Fiction. But I didn't go seeking this book out. It actually came in my inbox and in my email as a, a deal for two bucks, $1.99. So I figured, what could go wrong, right? Winner of the Nobel Prize, as well as such a title as that. And speaking of the title, it's actually from a William Blake poem, which is a, a massive influence, not only in the title, but in the prose itself, as well as something that is very important to the main character. But what is the hook? What is drive your plow over the bones of the dead? That's a mouthful about. Well, it is about an old woman, an old Polish woman named Janina, but don't call her that. She doesn't like to be called that. And she lives in a, in a sleepy village uh, on the outskirts of the Czech Republic, so right there on the border of Poland. And she discovers a dead body. Yes, one of her neighbors, in fact, uh, a, per a person she calls Bigfoot. And yes, I'll, I'll talk more about that when I talk about character. And over time, more bodies begin to pile up as the mystery deepens. But this isn't just a book about a murder mystery. This is really at its heart as an as a intimate portrait of this woman who is infatuated with astrology and, of course, the work of William Blake. So what did I think? Well, let us start off with the character. And we only get one POV in this entire novel because it is told in first person. So what does that mean? Well, it means we get a very intimate portrait of this woman. We learn that she's infatuated with astrology. She, of course, loves William B Blake, and she translates William Blake along with her friend who she calls Dizzy. And that's an interesting thing about her is she has all these strange names for people, right? So Bigfoot I mentioned, and another neighbor she calls Oddball. And here we have Dizzy as well. And so you'll see throughout this book that she names people these 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 strange qualities, right? Or, or, or names based on their qualities. And speaking of names, speaking of proper nouns, she does something that's interesting as well, and that is capitalized nouns, many nouns. And at first I was wondering what this was about. Now I'm not very familiar with William Blake's work. I know, I know. But in fact, it, it caused me to dig deeper into his work. And, and in fact, I found that he did capitalize many nouns. Maybe that's a common practice in poetry. Maybe it's not. I'm not quite sure. I'm not a, a massive poetry fan myself, at least an avid reader of it. And so all of this was injected in the prose, right? As you we were reading it, as Janina was recounting her tale of what happened, what these murders are about, where they came from, what the mystery was, and, and all of these colorful characters that populate the world around her. And speaking of those side characters, they're just not there, as I said, to populate the world, right? But they complement and contrast with her personality. And, and I feel like even though we have a single POV, which I love, by the way, I love novels with single POVs. And none of these characters feel like a size. They feel as fleshed out as the main character. But back to Janina. Well, she's intelligent. She's resourceful. She doesn't give a shit what people think about her, right? She goes head to head with anybody, including the police, in fact. But as I mentioned, she's deeply into astrology and she has some very convincing arguments about uh, it's legitimacy. <laughs> and it just made me wonder, did the author, was she already this familiar with astrology or is it something that she that she researched for this novel in particular? Either way, it, it was fascinating. But despite the intelligence, despite the obsession with astrology, as well as the well-being of animals, her crotchety head rears itself quite often in this book. And so it, she, she always feels like she's at odds with this introspection, these deeper, bigger thoughts, but always battling this old lady that she is. All right, let's talk about the plot next. Well, it's a murder mystery, or is it? Well, it's billed as a murder mystery, and in fact, that's exactly how the, the novel starts, so it does not beat around the bush with anything. Uh, we open up with Janina discovering the body of her neighbor, Bigfoot, uh, along with her other neighbor, Oddball, and they begin to prepare the body, wondering how it happened. Why did this all go down? And other murders do happen, right? Uh, peppered throughout this novel. But I, I wouldn't say this is really a murder mystery. This is, is kind of, as I keep saying, a portrait of this woman. So there are plenty of chapters, plenty of scenes, uh, a large parts of this book that we don't even talk about the murders, right? It, it's almost as if they never happened. And we're following Janina along uh, her with her day where she teaches English at the school. She also is a, a caretaker essentially for the neighborhood she lives in. And of course, her, her deep, deep knowledge of astrology and her convincing arguments to its validity. And what really carries this novel though is Janina herself. She's a very interesting character, but unfortunately the plot, as I said, it sags a little bit, right? There were, there were moments where I was 
bored. I, I wondered what, where the novel was going. What is this direction uh, Janina is taking us with her recounting of her tale? I don't want to say it ever got bad enough to where I wanted to quit. I, I think it also did help that this novel is on the short side. It's just under 300 pages. But even in the slower parts, uh, Janina kept it alive for me. And, and again, this is why I put such an emphasis on character. It is literally what makes the story go on, regardless of the plot. But the ending... Do we solve the mystery of these murders? Yes, it does have a very satisfying conclusion, one that I did not personally see coming. But does it completely make up for all of the missteps uh, of the slower plot previously? I don't really think so. I, I enjoyed the book overall, but I would say that it is it is kind of uneven, for lack of a better word. So let us talk about the writing next, or as I like to call it, the cinematography of the novel. Well, this was originally written in Polish, and it was translated by a woman named Antonia Lloyd-Jones, and it's a very good translation. I've, I've read and commented on plenty of videos on my channel about how sometimes translating something to English doesn't quite go over well. A novel that I really was excited about and tried to get into is called The Third Body Problem by a Chinese writer. I'm, I'm sorry, the name escapes me. But the writing was dull, had a lack of immersion, and inevitably led me to quit the novel. Another person who is poorly translated in my opinion, however, I'm sure this opinion is in the minority, is Murakami. I've read one of his novels after dark, and I've also read one of his short stories, and I found the, the translations pretty weak, to be honest. But you will not find that here. The translation is done very well. I never found myself caught up in clunky prose or, or was reading things that didn't quite telegraph emotionally to me. Everything was concise, clear, and, and I believe Antonia definitely captured the voice of Janina. First person POV, past tense, that is how we experience this entire novel. Now there are shortcomings to this voice and, and I believe that those shortcomings show themselves here. And what I mean by that is normally when we're reading a third person book, it's more, it's more like a film, right? It's more cinematic, it's more descriptive in terms of showing the action, right? Showing, not telling, as we like to say. But when we're in the first person voice, we tend to tell stories, right? It's as if we are telling a story to someone else. So we're going to glaze over a lot of things like, I looked here, I walked there, I picked this up, because inevitably that's going to get too boring. And it's not very realistic when someone is telling a story to you. What that leads to is heavy exposition, meaning, like I said, the character telling us what happened in not an immersive way. When I read fiction, uh, being immersed in a story and being able to visualize, it's really important for me. And unfortunately, there were parts of this book that just went that way, right? They went heavy in exposition. And the strange thing about it is there is a, a pivotal scene in this book where we're learning about the character named Oddball. We learn about his past, where he came from, what he's all about, right? And normally in books, I think that's when you slow things down. You create a situation where that is unfolding before your eyes. So even if it may seem a little bit unrealistic in first person because we wouldn't tell a story or remember all the details in such a way, I think it's the right thing to do, right? Because we want to really hone in on this pivotal moment in the book. But here, it is, for the most part, explained to us. It's not shown to us, it is told to us. And this has happened a few other times in the book as well. And those times, I kind of just shrugged it off and, and, and just said, whatever. But when, we, when it came to this point in the novel, when something was relevatory in a way, I felt like it was a misstep. I felt like it was a bad decision. Which is why I'm going to give Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead a 7 out of 10. A fun, interesting, complex character to read about who literally tells the story to us. Set in a sleepy village full of atmosphere, populated by interesting characters. But with a plot that starts off strong and kind of wavers throughout the book, but does have a strong finish. It's funny because I just reviewed The Road as well, which won the Pulitzer Prize, not the Nobel Prize for fiction. And if you haven't watched that review, well, you'll just know, you'll have to know that it, it just blew me away, really. It's the second time I read it. And so I, I was looking at this book and seeing, do I feel, right? Do I feel that this novel should have won this prestigious award? I don't know. There's some some really great things about it. And it's a book that I've been thinking about lately. I, I finished this about a week ago and I, I wanted to just stew in it for a little while, think about it and collect my thoughts because I think something sometimes jumping to a review right after you've read something or watched something is is not a good decision because you're acting somewhat emotionally. You're, you haven't really thought the whole thing through. But yeah, while I did enjoy this novel, I don't feel like it was strong enough to deserve such a prestigious award. But I'd love to know, have you read this book? Do you disagree with me or do you see the same flaws? Another thing I'd like to say is that I'm glad it wasn't just a murder mystery, right? It was a detailed character portrait 
intermixed with a murder mystery. And so at the very least, I can say, if you decide to pick this up, it's gonna be something pretty unique that you may have not read before. And like any good character, I'm sure Janina will live on inside me for a very long time. So I hope you enjoyed the review. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you'd like to check out my own work, you can look in the description below. I also have a Discord where we talk about books all the time. It's completely free to join. The link is also in the description. And thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.